one of the ways that we're shifting our practice at Helmut High is just our timetable. So we've got students bouncing one hour to the next to the next, and it's quite disorientating for some of our students. And so we're just taking the simple step of deciding to do two hour lessons. And um, it's actually been quite liberating for us to make that decision because out of that, it's almost like there's a collective sigh of relief and this this willingness to engage with some new ideas that will be associated with how we teach these two hour blocks in a way that's going to maintain engagement and uh, yeah, just ensure that students have a good authentic learning experience. So we're shifting practice at Hagley. It's been a really big shift in from what we teach to who we teach and how we can best teach those people. And so it's a, a shift from content to people more than anything. The biggest enabler for me personally in shifting my practice is that the school is really open to allowing teachers to be experimental with strategies and processes that they use in class. And in providing we can say, well, these group of students needed this because, and it's student focused, the school's really open to that. And it's a really good environment, it's a really safe environment for teachers to be experimental with what they're doing and to explore different ways of doing of teaching their, within their subject. And so it creates a real sense of um, purpose and, and um, agentic purpose in teaching that you have control over the way you teach and that you can teach the way you need to teach to satisfy the needs of your students' learning. One of the enabling factors for our school, uh, which has opened up uh, really people's minds to, to explore things more freely, has been the influence of the, the Grow Wide Taha um, conferences that we've had, and, and also people coming that, that we've met at the Grow Wide Taha, um, you know, the COPs, that have come back to our school and, and talked with us. So that's really opened up dialogues, and it's, it's taken a couple of years, but we're at a point now where we feel a lot freer to explore things. So some advice that I would give to other teachers going in to, and becoming experimental is that it's okay to get it wrong and that you admit it to yourself and that you admit it to your students and they'll work with you. If you just say to them, I've never tried this before, let's, shall we do this? They'll be into it and just say, oh, I'm just learning and be the learner and be open about being the learner. And I think that the students will value your process and they will keep you safe through it they won't they don't um they don't bag you for it they don't give you a hard time they just honor the fact that you're giving something new a go because you think genuinely that it will help them what we've found is that by having appropriate pd you know just in time pd and having that marriage to the, married to this this cloud technology that we're using those two together I've seen that it's it's really um, given teachers the freedom. It's almost liberated them in terms of uh, their ideas around how they can teach and how they can tackle some of these traditional modes of teaching. It's definitely starting to shift mindsets. People are more playful. Um, people are more willing to experiment just because of those two things, the, the cloud-based tech and, and the PD program that's gone alongside it. The biggest enabler for us was, I guess, the foundations and the philosophy that we were built on. Uh, the challenge is how do you how do you do that when you've got 400, 500 students in your school? How do you keep personalising it? Um, and for that, we rely on our, our systems and having um, really staff and students who who believe in what we're trying to do. We're at that point now where we feel a lot. We feel like we're ready to um, experiment ourselves. We feel that we won't be judged. We're ready to make some of our own mistakes and learn from them. Yeah.